Traditionally, a tug tows a major new model airplane for its rollout debut. But the self-powered DC-10 rolled out with engines operating quieter than the bagpiping Scottish band preceding it. Flight crew then proved out the DC-10's ground performance on the runways at Long Beach Airport. Taxi runs included a low-speed run at 60 knots. 80-knot runs involving all engines reversed with moderate braking. A high-speed run at 100 knots. run at 100 knots with full flaps down landing configuration. With taxi runs completed satisfactorily and with all systems go, the long-awaited event of the first flight was moved up to the 29th of August, 1970, two and a half weeks ahead of schedule. Right now, Flight 191, American Airlines, is just smoldering ruins. Rescue crews are seemingly unable to get very close to that wreckage. It departed O'Hare Field around 3.15 today. We still know nothing about why the plane crashed. The scattered remains of the Turkish Airlines DC-10, which crashed in the forest of Ermanonville near Paris, killing all 345 passengers and crew. the worst air disaster in aviation history, it almost doubles any previous death toll. Plane 19, he's coming down real fast on the south end. Okay, all right, he's going down. There he's going down. He's on fire. Down. 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 I just turned away and kneeled because it was like getting your heart ripped out. I compare it to being in like a washer, that we were just spun around and around and around, and all these things were hitting me, and I was trying to hold on so tight, but the force just made my head keep coming, popping up and popping up and popping up. It looked like that. The McDonnell Douglas DC-10 was a three-engine wide-bodied airliner that was developed by the McDonnell Douglas Corporation that made its maiden voyage on August 29, 1970. The aircraft was designed for transcontinental and long-range flights that could carry over 300 passengers. However, the DC-10 suffered several catastrophic crashes and safety issues that tarnished its safety record in public image. Most of these issues focused on the aircraft's cargo bay door, which had the tendency to malfunction in flight. This is the story of the troubled history of the DC-10. The DC-10 program began in 1967, with a concept of having a double-deck passenger area and four engines. Later designs finally centered around a wide-bodied single-deck cabin with three engines. Engines 1 and 3 would be attached to the wings, and engine 2 would be mounted on the rear fuselage, also known as the empennage. Engine 2 also contained the vertical stabilizer, which in turn included the rudder. The DC-10 would be revolutionary in avionics, flight controls, aerodynamic, and other areas. The DC-10 was developed and produced in Long Beach, California, and was introduced to the public in 1971. Production started in 1968, and the first civil delivery took place in 1971 with American Airlines. The DC-10 was held for its large passenger cabin in Space's interior, and it wouldn't be long before the jet graced aviation magazines and advertising billboards. 
The United States Air Force also purchased several DC-10s and developed a mid-air refueling plane called the KC-10 Extender. On June 12, 1972, a DC-10 registered to American Airlines Flight 96 took off from Los Angeles International Airport to LaGuardia Airport in New York City. The trip would require five intermediate stopovers before arriving at its ultimate destination. At around 11,750 feet, the crew felt a thud sound followed by a swirl of wind and debris in the cabin. This was followed by a loss of control and the aircraft and the pilots disengaged the autopilot. The plane's elevators, the control surfaces at the rear that controls the pitch, were also sluggish in their controls. The plane was in constant right side yaw and Detroit Air Traffic Control then cleared the plane for landing at Wayne County Airport there. In the passenger cabin, flight attendants also heard a loud noise and a sudden fog of air and debris. The stewardess were now aware of a decompression somewhere on the aircraft and tried to see if the emergency oxygen mask had been deployed for the passengers. The plane was cleared to land at Wayne County Airport and passengers were informed that a crash landing was about to take place. After a hard and difficult landing, the plane came to rest at 8,000 feet from the runway threshold. The emergency slides deployed and all the passengers vacated the aircraft. At this time, emergency crews had already gathered at the scene of the crash. Members of the National Transportation and Safety Board, or NTSB, investigated the aircraft and noticed the rear cargo bay door was missing and that there was damage to the rear of the plane. A section of floor in that area was missing and two flight attendants were in that area, but they were all accounted for. None of the passengers or crew were harmed. And one of the deadliest air crashes of all time happened on March 3, 1974, when a Turkish Airlines DC-10 crashed in a forest in northern France. The plane carried a crew of 11 and 335 passengers. The plane took off from Istanbul, Turkey and headed for Paris' Orly Airport. 50 passengers left the plane and 216 passengers boarded it. Many passengers took up the opportunity to board Flight 981 due to a labor strike with British Airways. The plane was refueled and the baggage was handled. At 12.30 p.m., the plane took off for London, England. Somewhere over the French countryside, there was a violent decompression of the aircraft and the pilots lost control. The aircraft then began a downward dive and crashed into the Irvionville Forest just 23 miles northeast of Paris. The plane crashed at such a high rate of speed that the plane disintegrated on impact. During the Memorial Day weekend of 1979, an American Airlines DC-10 crashed just outside of Chicago's O'Hare International Airport, killing all 273 passengers and crew. It is the deadliest aviation disaster in United States history. The plane took off rather smoothly, but eyewitnesses stated that they saw what looked like one of the engines fall off the plane. The plane only got around 300 feet before the aircraft banked hard to the left in a downward position before it crashed in a field next to a trailer park. The aircraft was completely destroyed and all 271 people on board had died, as well as two on the ground. American Airlines Flight 191 is the deadliest air disaster in United States history. The flight was on its way to Los Angeles at the time of the incident. Just several months after the crash of Flight 191, a DC-10 registered to Air New Zealand crashed on Mount Erebus on Ross Island in Antarctica. On November 28, 1979, Air New Zealand Flight 901 was conducting sightseeing tours on the 7th continent. A flight plan was studied and approved by Air New Zealand and the authorities in which the plane would fly directly over the active volcano called Mount Erebus. 
These included the use of radio beacons such as the non-directional beacons, or NDBs, and a military tactical air navigation system, or TACN. The flight took off from Auckland International Airport. A typing error on November 9th developed a more southern route that took the DC-10 over McMurdo Sound. The flight crew accepted this route because of past uses of it, although it wasn't recommended. A previous pilot noticed the error and informed the officials, but they simply updated the McMurdo waypoints to correspond with the McMurdo Tacken, despite the route of McMurdo not being approved. The navigational change to McMurdo was entered, but the pilots of 901 were not notified of this. The crew entered the coordinates into the plane's inertial navigation system, or INS. The INS is a navigational aid that uses computers, motion sensors, and gyroscopes to calculate relative motion without the use of other references. In order to get close to the surface for tourists, the plane would descend to 10,000 feet. During the flight, the pilots then contacted McMurdo Station that the plane would be dropping down to 2,000 feet. This altitude was not recommended, but encouraged to optimize tourist experience. However, a cloud bank had moved in and obscured the surrounding area, creating what is known as a whiteout. A whiteout is when contours and points of references become obscured due to snowy conditions. The crew of Flight 901 had thought that they had been over McMurdo Sound. In addition, they thought they had passed over a large ice pack called Ross Island Ice Shelf. This deceived everyone as the shelf was on the other side of the mountain. Instead, the flight was rapidly approaching the slope of Mount Erebus, and New Zealand pilots were not trained in polar air routes. At 12.49 p.m. New Zealand time, the Ground Proximity Warning System, or GPWS, alerted the crew of a sun elevation in terrain, however it was too late. A go-around was attempted, but there was no room. Air New Zealand Flight 901 crashed into Mount Erebus and exploded. All 257 people on board had been killed. It is the deadliest air disaster in New Zealand's history and the third deadliest crash of the DC-10. Due to the difficult conditions on Mount Erebus, the wreckage remains there to this day. United Airlines Flight 232 was a scheduled flight from Denver, Colorado to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania that made a crash landing in Sioux City, Iowa after suffering an in-flight failure of the number 2 engine and subsequent loss of hydraulic pressure. About an hour after takeoff, the crew heard a loud bang. They then noticed that the number 2 engine had failed. The number 2 engine is the engine mounted on the tail. At the same time, the main hydraulic gauge is also read zero. Emergency contingencies were put in place, but the hydraulic power did not return. The plane was then in a downward right-hand descent. Flight 232 contacted Minneapolis, Minnesota Airport for an emergency landing there, but Sioux City, Iowa was chosen, and the crew readied the flight for a landing in Iowa. 11 minutes from the airport, the flight was cleared to land on runway 31. The plane was headed for runway 22, which was closed. However, due to the aircraft's proximity and control issues, the pilots opted for runway 22. right wing touched the ground in the center line of runway 22 followed by the main landing gear. The plane then skidded further down the runway before becoming inverted and flipping over. Eyewitnesses in a television news camera recorded the scene. The plane then cartwheeled and was on fire. The plane was destroyed and 111 people died. However, out of 296 people on board, 187 ultimately survived. 
United Flight 232 was the fourth deadliest crash involving a DC-10 in less than a decade. The loss of four aircraft and the deaths of nearly 1,000 people in the span of less than a decade caused public perception to turn sharply against the DC-10. Some passengers even decided not to take the aircraft due to its poor safety record. In the first two incidences, particularly Flight 96, investigators noticed that the rear cargo door was missing and damage to the left stabilizer was found. The cargo door was found in Windsor, Canada and was brought in and studied. It was found that the electrical lock pins that held the door in place did not lock fully. A ground crew member also mentioned that it was very hard to close the door and a warning light in the cockpit did not illuminate to warn the crew. The door latches also did not indicate a proper lock. A hazard advisory called a service bulletin was made by McDonnell Douglas, but the order was not mandated on any of its aircraft. In flight, the overwhelming pressure ripped the door off the plane and it subsequently damaged the elevator when the door hit it. Also, the cabin floor in the area in question collapsed into the control bay, the avionics and hydraulics. The door ferry would ultimately prove disastrous on Turkish Airlines Flight 981. Unlike American Airlines 96, which has some of its hydraulic control surfaces intact, this was not the case for Flight 981 as it had lost all of its flight controls and crashed. The cargo door employed a plug door scheme, which prevented the door from being open as the plane was being pressurized. Also, the door would open outward as opposed to inward as the cargo door would take up too much space inside the cargo bay. American Airlines Flight 191 suffered the loss of its left engine, and images of the plane crashing can be seen with its left engine missing and in its place, a stream of fuel and hydraulic fluid. Investigators then focused on the missing engine and the engine support, which is known as a pylon. The investigators noticed damage to the pylon strut mounted on the wing. It was a maintenance issue, as it was mentioned that the left engine was replaced during a maintenance shift in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Regulations called for the engine only to be removed, but in order to save time, the entire engine and pylon structure were removed. Furthermore, reinstalling the engine required the use of an overhead crane, yet a simple forklift was used to reattach the component back to the wing. The forklift managed to jam the pylon onto the wing, which damaged the support mounting struts. Cracks in the metal would appear, and over time, the cracks grew to the point of failure. On the day of the disaster, the stress was just enough to sever the already weakened pylon mounts and the engine detached from the wing. The detached engine ruined the left wing's hydraulic system and the aerodynamic flow over the wings was compromised. A stall ensued and the plane banked hard to the left before crashing. It should be noted that a camera was installed in the passenger cabin to give passengers the view of takeoff, and American Airlines was the first to use this technology. It is quite possible that the passengers witnessed their own deaths on camera. In the case of United Flight 232, investigators looked into the pilot's claim that Engine 2 had failed. They also studied the loss of the hydraulics in the aircraft. Investigators were able to recover the fan disc of the engine. It had large cracks in it and also showed metal fatigue issues. It is believed that the fan disc shattered and the metal fragments of the engine punctured the hydraulic feed cables that control the plane's elevator controls. The elevators are located at the horizontal stabilizer and control the plane's up and down motions, also known as the pitch. In order to get some control of the aircraft, the pilots used the throttles of the two remaining engines. The pilots landed the plane at a high rate of speed, which caused the plane to break apart on impact. Despite the high death toll, the pilot, Al Hayes, is noted for his exceptional flying skills, and the ground crew are also credited for their work in assisting in the crash.
deaths of nearly 1,000 people or a relatively new aircraft in a span of less than a decade led to serious confidence issues with the DC-10. A bombing on another DC-10 in Africa also didn't help the plane's already damaged reputation. Orders for the DC-10 dropped sharply and a recession of the late 1970s did not help matters as demand for air travel decreased. With increased safety measures and the plane's dependability, the DC-10 was able to put the past behind it and became popular once again with flight crews and passengers. In 2011, the last DC-10 was taken out of civilian use. The plane still flies as cargo aircraft and some have even been converted to firefighting use.